As in the rest of the world, IP has taken over many forms of information transport within broadcasting. But what is IP, and how does it transport this information? IP stands for Internet Protocol, and it's an array of services, or protocols, that when combined form a very powerful method for moving data over a network where there is no direct connection, or switch, between the sending and receiving points. This is in direct contrast to the telephone network, such as when you place a call, a direct and dedicated path is switched into place, making a connection between you and the phone you are calling. This dedicated line is not shared with anyone else while your phone call is taking place. When using IP protocols on a digital network, a single line can be used for a myriad of other data, including audio, video, pictures, and other data, as well as network controls. In this way, much more data or information can be sent over a single connection. But unlike the telephone system, there must be some pretty smart devices at each end and in between to make it all work. IP is used to describe several services or protocols that handle different aspects of the job of moving data from point A to point B. The complete suite of protocols is named TCP IP, where TCP stands for Transport Control Protocol and IP is Internet Protocol. TCP handles the control or flow of data using a number of different protocols, and IP handles addressing and routing of data. Together, they handle all aspects of data flow over and between networks. This includes formatting the data into the required size and structure, providing unique addresses for each device on the network so that the data knows where to go, network messages to be sent back and forth to coordinate the flow of data, and to provide for different ports, or portals, on each device that accept the different types of data sent to it so they can be processed and responded to correctly. TCP IP is part of what is called the OSI model, or Open Systems Interconnection Model. OSI is a description of seven layers of functions, each providing needed information or abilities to the layer above it. As an example, layer one is the physical layer and is concerned with the actual wires and voltages used to send data over a network. Layer one then provides an electrical path to the messages sent by the next layer up the data link layer on level 2. Layer 2 is where protocols that are used to move data within a network reside, such as Ethernet frames, which will be explained later. Layer 3, or the network layer, is used for protocols that move data from one network to another using packets. This is the layer used on the internet, as it only moves data in the form of packets between various networks around the world. What Layer 2 does, for Layer 3, is move data to the edge of the network so it can be pushed out onto the Internet, or another separate network, where Layer 3 takes over control of the data. The rest of the layers are concerned with higher functions, from transport to session, presentation, and finally Layer 7, application, where data is sent and received by network applications that use it such as HTTP or FTP. This, of course, is a very simplified explanation of the OSI model. Please explore more information about it on the web or in books for a more thorough understanding. IP is used every day by anyone who uses a computer on a network, but it's also used in a number of other situations since it is a standard that is built into many devices and allows the use of common network components and cabling. Within the world of broadcasting, you can find IP in use all around the plant. 
In mobile TV broadcasting, IP is part of the ATSC mobile handheld specification, allowing for real-time and delayed viewing of television shows as well as downloading of other data to mobile devices. In radio, IP plays a big part of IBOC, or in-band on-channel digital radio, or HD radio as it's called now. The digital audio and data for broadcasting is sent to the IBOC transmitter in IP format, making it easy to use standard network infrastructure and equipment. Much of today's broadcast equipment, including the open gear system, uses IP for communication with rack equipment for control and monitoring. Automation control of servers and other equipment is also carried out using IP. High-speed networks in the form of gigabit Ethernet are using IP to move video in data format between storage devices such as NAS and SAN to playout servers and nonlinear editors. For remote broadcasts, radio is using VOIP or Voice over IP to get audio from remote sites back to the studio via data networks. And for television, there is video over IP, which is now gaining attention with systems from manufacturers such as VBRIC and Streambox. Once video and audio are encoded into an ASI stream, it can be converted into a TSO IP or transport stream over IP for transport over IP networks. Many stations now have internet access at their transmitter sites and this has led to many transmitter remote control systems having IP interconnectivity for control and monitoring. As you can see, IP is widely used in broadcasting and it will only become more important as we move forward.